Amanda here from createyourfuture.co. So today I got a great video about how to live from the end. What does it mean? Is living in the end and from the end the same thing? Absolutely not. And I'm going to explain why and how you can live from the end to actually make everything you want come true. Just before I dive into it, guys, we are having a contest and we get to 100,000 subscribers. We are giving away three free coaching sessions to three different people, one session each. All you need to do is to enter is to share our videos, make sure you're subscribed and also comment. What have you manifested using the law of attraction? Now we realize that hundred thousand subscribers is a huge jump from where we are, but that's okay. We're running this contest to give something back in exchange for sharing our message and we're helping people and the reason why we're doing this is because we're giving hope and inspiration to people so it's not so much the end goal it's the journey and you know we want everybody to live in their power and to create what they want and to live the lives that they want i mean that's the whole reason why i started this company was because i was doing peer counseling all throughout my life and you know there were so many people stuck in relationships and in situations that they thought they had no control to change and it just killed me it was like wow you know what there is a better way you can have what you want and that's what all of our coaches here are to do or to help you to get the results you want to live the life that you want to live we live the life we want to live and we want to share how we do it so you guys can all be happy as well so yeah it's all just about sharing caring and inspiring one another to go after your dreams and to have what you want because you're all powerful enough to have it. And guys, of course, I have a course. It is Create the Relationship You Love. It's for recreating any relationship in your life, okay? So it's not so much for manifesting someone new. It's definitely for recreating a brother, a mother, a specific person, a husband, anybody getting your crush. As long as you know the person and you have some sort of relationship with them, even if it's you just wanting a relationship, my course is going to be able to help you. So let's dive into this, living from the end. The first thing I'm going to go over is living in the end and living from the end. What is the difference of the two? Okay, so first of all, living in the end looks a lot like just dreaming of it and just thinking about it and just going, okay, you know what? I see him here with me. He's eating dinner with me, cleaning out your bedroom closet to give him half the space. I mean, that's living in the end, okay? So living in the end is just simply thinking about your end, okay? how do you live from the end what we want to do is live from the end okay and neville actually explains the difference of this in one of his books it's actually the wealth mindset is what the book is called and he explains that living from the end is actually living from that end with all of your reactions okay so all your thoughts have to come from your end. You have to embrace who you want to be before you're going to be that, okay? So if you're, say, for instance, a really good example, okay, is when I was manifesting my engagement with Andrew, he told me so many times that he did not want, uh, like, want to get married again. And sure, I created that. Absolutely, I did. Now, if I was living, I was living in the end, dreaming of it, thinking about it. But if my reaction to him was, well, you know what, why are we even living together anyway, if you don't want to marry me? Okay, that reaction is very much living from the end of rejection. Okay, so when he would tell me that he didn't want to get married again, I lived from the end. And I thought, what would my reaction be if I already had what I want, if I knew he wanted to, to marry me, and I knew that was eventually going to happen. And I went, well, my reaction would be, well, okay, you're not ready yet. I get it. Okay. Because he wasn't ready yet. I created him not to be ready yet. So my reaction to him was like, that's okay. I totally understand. No rush, no pressure. I love the relationship that we have now. That was living from the end of being married. That was living from the end of being in a loving relationship. Okay. So how you live from the end is in a sum total of all of your reactions, all of your thoughts throughout the day. Okay. So let's use an example of going on social media, okay? So we go on social media, say Instagram, okay? And, and our specific person's on there, okay? And we're looking at them like liking all of these other girls' pictures, okay? If we're going to start to beat ourselves up and think, oh my goodness, and my manifestations aren't working, and he doesn't want to be with me, and he's messaging and liking all these other girls' stuff, then we're definitely living from the end of rejection, 
Okay. So I went through a similar situation when I first started dating Andrew and I did go through his social media and I did start thinking that, but then what I started to do was I was like, no, I've got to be strong on my mental diet. Okay. So we're only dating. Okay. Like that's my current reality. I do want to be serious with this guy. I do see him liking other girls posts and like friending other girls. Okay. Which wasn't making me happy, but I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to start creating my intentions and being strong when I do look at his social media. And so I started looking at it like a catalog. I'm like, he's going to like all my posts and he's never going to like another girl's post. And I'm going to be there with him and I'm going to go there with him. And I stayed on my mental diet living from the end of being in a relationship with him. Because if I was in a relationship with him and I absolutely trusted him, okay, I wouldn't be freaking out and worrying about him liking other people's posts. I would say things like, oh, it's probably just a work colleague or, oh, it's just some networking thing. Okay. And I right away started to create that story of trust and that what my thoughts would be if I saw him doing this, if we were in a relationship, okay, a relationship that where I trusted and loved and the other person was worthy of being trustworthy, okay, because really it comes down to your thoughts. You always have a choice. You're always living from one end or another. Which end are you living in? You get to choose that with your thoughts, with your reaction, okay? So when you're going to create something, okay, you want to be the person that in, and live from that end that you want to be. And you want to do that with your reactions, okay, and your thoughts, okay? So sometimes you may have to sit down and go, okay, look at if I had, if we were in this relationship and we were together and they liked another girl's post, right? If you were to like get upset about it, all you're going to do is cause a fight. And again, you created it. So now what we're doing is we're reacting to it and we're going to probably end up ruining the relationship, right? So you've got to start creating now, you know, and, and, um, you know, what you want to be and how you want to act in that relationship, as well as you can still say, well, no, they're not going to, you know, like other women's posts. They're not going to befriend other women. Okay. But, you know, you do that from the end of, well, of course they, they don't want to be with anyone but me. Right. And once you have enough of those reactions that you change them to the end that you want and you live from that end, you're going to start to see that, you know, whatever you're manifesting is really going to start to take shape and it's going to fall into place. Okay. Because it's not just about, you know, taking some time and visualizing. Of course, you can visualize, right? But it's the sum total of all your thoughts throughout the day, okay? So, you know, if we're reacting and, you know, upset and worried and jealous and thinking it's not working and living from the end of rejection 80% of the day, and then we throw 20% of intentions on there of what we want, well, we're still going to be creating this, okay? So, yeah, it's a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. And, you know what, I'm sorry to be the, the, the messenger of this information, but you've got to bring, you know, your percentage of the day up where you're living with all your thoughts and your reactions to be the person that you want to be. You can still have a little bit of this, but the reacting has to be a lot lower than what you're actually creating, okay? So in those times, right, like I know just recently I was creating something and you know what, I wasn't feeling all that great. As you can hear, I'm a little bit sick, totally manifested the flu, totally my fault, totally knew it. So but what I did was I wanted to create something, even though I didn't feel good, which is fine, something actually quite big. So I just started saying it. And of course I didn't feel it, but I do believe that my thoughts create. So in those moments, you know, when I go to react, I just non-judgmentally observe, okay, what have I created? And it was like, oh yeah, you know what? I, I know I created that, okay? And then if we can do it in a non-judgmental way where we're not reacting over what we've created in a negative way, we can stop and we can take a breath and go, okay, this is what I want instead, okay? And bring ourselves back to living from the end that we want, living from, you know, being the person and having what we want, okay? So yeah, you know, it, it's all about living from the end and you want to put a lot in there, you know, when you create, you know, what you want as an end, what are you going to see, hear and feel? So Neville also talks about doing SATs, state akin to sleep, okay? And it's really, really good, okay? Whether you just do like, you know, intentions in your head or affirmations, or even just, you know, talk about a scene that you want to see, or whether you visualize it, it doesn't matter. And the reason is, is because your subconscious mind is going to create a picture of it anyway, because your subconscious mind can't see, um, can't see words, it just sees pictures. So if you say, you know, I, you know, I want to get married, your subconscious mind will automatically conjure up a picture of you in a wedding dress. Okay. So, 
when you start to, you know, do your sats at night, you get relaxed, okay? Like relax yourself, relax your body, you know, do some deep breathing, you know, get into, you know, a semi-drowsy state, but not enough where you're falling asleep and focus on what you want. See the image, okay? So like, for instance, um, if it's marriage, you can picture the part of, you know, saying I do and, and kissing the person. If it's getting a job, you can picture people congratulating you, okay? And, you know, or at least, you know, run over that scenario in your head with your with your audio like you know with your own voice like your inner conversation um I think it's sometimes we beat ourselves up when it comes to sats because some of us are not visual people and that's okay. So some people are more audio and they hear their own voice. Some people think in pictures and they're visual. It doesn't matter. Like I said, your subconscious mind only sees in pictures. So it doesn't matter what you can do up here. It matters how, what you're focusing on up here, not how. You can do it with words and you can like create a scene and you can say, well, I can see everybody, you know, congratulating me. They're all smiling. They're saying I've done a great job or you can take the time and you can actually visualize that, okay? And so when you create that sat scene, right, you know, that's the scene. If you do that enough, right, you'll start to find that your reactions throughout the day to things will actually change because that's what you've you know, set into your subconscious mind, but it still does take some work. It still does take a mental diet. Okay. There is no way out of actually doing a mental diet. You have to do a mental diet. There will be moments that, you know, we'll do a sat scene for every night, but then we'll forget and we'll react. Well, that's fine, but you've got to catch yourself and say, okay, am I reacting from the end of being in being rejected or, and, you know, and, and not getting what I want, or am I going to react from the end that I am going to get what I want? And remember, the more we resist our our 3D, the you know we're 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 only going to make it worse. We've got to accept what we've created, okay? Acknowledge it and then renounce it, okay? So back to my example of Andrew not wanting to get married again, right? Yeah, well we'll see how long that's. It didn't last long because we're engaged. But you know when he said he never wanted to get married again, okay? I said okay, well you know how am I going to react to this, okay? If I would have just said well why are we living together anyway? I don't want to be with you unless you want to marry me. I don't see the point of this. Then. I would have just pushed him farther away because, you know, it was, that wasn't, you know, that, that is from the end of rejection. And then the other person says, well, you don't appreciate me. I'm sorry. I don't make you happy. Maybe we should end things. Okay. This is like the start of every single fight, you know, the relationship talk, right? So, you know, if you were going, well, look at, you know, they do want to be with me and obviously they're not ready yet. Be honest with yourself. I mean, I know I created Andrew not to be ready yet because I had a story that every guy that was previously married had baggage. So him saying he never wanted to get married again was basically my manifestation. Okay. And then when I brought up, you know, getting married, he was like, well, I never want to do it again. And then me reacting to it, would have just pushed him away because I created him not to want to be married. And then I, and then when, when he said, no, I reacted, like when we brought the topic, he said, you know, when the marriage topic came up, it never, you know, no, 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 it's never going to happen. But then I went, no, if I'm going to live from a person that's married and in a relationship where we love each other and we're caring and we're understanding of each other, I accepted the fact that I created him with that. And then I said to him verbally at the time when, you know, every time it came up or whenever he brought it up and I said, that's fine right? It's okay. I get it. You're not ready. Okay. I totally get it. I love the relationship the way it is. Accepted what I created. And then I renounced it. I said, okay, no, I intend he's over his baggage and ready for a relationship. Okay. So I hope, and I intend that you guys see where you can apply living from the end in your daily life, in your daily reactions. Okay. Because really starting to shift those reactions is really what's going to shift your reality. And you know, when, when I am creating something, it's about persistence is, you know, when I look and I see the opposite in my reality, I remind myself, my thoughts create, I've created this, this is what I want instead. I know this is going to happen. I believe that my thoughts create and, you know, making sure that you're on your mental diet in those moments. So you can really, you know, push through to the finish line and create something wonderful in your life. So guys, I intend that helps. I intend, I intend, I intend. You guys, each and every one of you guys are amazing. You're special. You guys are very powerful creators and you deserve everything that you absolutely want in your life. And I intend that you guys all get it. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.